front end damage from a rear end collision, how do you get your vehicle back on the road so you can get to work tomorrow? So I've done quite a few of these over the years for friends and families and neighbors. This one just happens to be a 2005 Chevy Silverado pickup truck. And you can see the uh, front end's been pushed in at least six inches. The dog's having a good time. But I've done a lot of front wheel drive cars where somebody's rear ended somebody else. And you generally, just doing this in your driveway, I can get these from 75 to 95% looking as good as new without doing really any body work. Just going through, pulling stuff out the same way it happened with just pretty much a come along a chain and a tree. Let me show you. So this truck is a different scenario than I generally deal with. Generally I deal with front wheel drive cars and generally those have a, a buckled hood from hitting a van or a truck themselves. Generally that's my experience what they hit. And so they actually go under the other vehicle and what they will do is it'll crease the hood and it'll generally the radiator core support will get pushed back a fair amount. You know, that's part of the grill, holds the radiator and holds the spacing on your fenders. And so if it did push back far enough to hit the radiator, you're going to have to replace the radiator if your radiator is leaking. The AC condenser a lot of times survives because the radiator cushions it. I don't know why, but it just does. Um, I've had I've put ones back in that were super bent, but they worked, and the AC system didn't get just discharged, so we were just fine. But even if it's bent all the way in and the radiator is punctured, you're gonna want to pull it out before you replace it or replace the radiator. You're gonna want to pull this out, but generally you don't need to even replace this when I go along with what I do. Um, sometimes your grill does. A lot of times zip ties and sheet metal screws takes care of that. If it's a plastic bumper, same thing. A lot of times you can put zip ties and sheet metal screws to hold it together. But first thing first, let's just start pulling. So I've got the truck lined up in line with where I'm pulling to. And you need a massive thing to pull from. You need a good sized tree. This is three feet in diameter and I got some strap to protect it. This tree right here is only about 10 inches, probably not enough to do it. So straight line pull, I'm pulling from the bottom because this I want to actually pull down. If it was a front wheel drive car, you might actually want to pull um, a little bit level or maybe even a little bit high to help pull up. I've got the parking brake set and I also have blocks behind the tire. If it requires too much force, I may actually have to chain another vehicle to the back end just to help from pulling this because I'm going to be dragging it. Talk equipment just really fast. These are come alongs. They're not expensive tools, but you also don't want to buy the cheapest $15 Harbor Freight one. You'll hate yourself for it. We're going to use a double line pole, which is this one right here. The cable actually comes back and hooks on itself, essentially giving me leverage and it's going to take half as much force, but it also pulls twice as hard with this style versus this style, which is simply just a single line pull. The line just comes straight out, doesn't loop back on itself. This is just a single line pull and this one does not, some of them have the capability to be both where this single line can also hook back and then there's a hook in the middle. This style does not. I'm not going to use this style for this. This might work. This one should be rated for just 2,000 pounds. This might work on a front wheel drive car with super thin sheet metal, but this is the one we're gonna use for the truck and this is the one I use most of the time. And that's just hooked to a bunch of different chains. You're gonna need um, generally some big hooks. Sometimes you're gonna need a way to hook. You know, this is a pretty large hook and that allows me to hook around things, in things. If I was pulling out the radiator core support, I can hook onto things. Sometimes I can take a pair of vice grips and you can clamp vice grips on. You can't pull very hard, but you can actually, vice grips are a good clamp and then you can pull, pull from those. If this was a front wheel drive car and you had your kinked hood, you had your creased hood, you'd want to pull the hood last. So the first thing I'd be pulling is in here in the radiator core support or down towards the bottom radiator core support and pulling it out and pulling the hood last. But so from there, I'm just going to start getting a workout. I started pulling and it just topped up right over these blocks, push those blocks forward. So I had to chain it to another vehicle and I put some blocks in the front wheels as well.
You can see what I was pulling right there. The tip of the clevis is actually coming back out a little bit, but I can hammer that back. But now I'm going to start pulling over in this crease and then maybe a little bit over there. But we've already got it out about two and a half inches. There you go, you can see, pulled it out roughly six inches or so. Um, a lot of times the plastic tabs on these things and the grill and stuff break off. I don't think this one did, but if it did, just some sheet metal screws or bailing wire just to hold it back in there, zip ties. We'll hold that stuff back in place as long as it can kind of go back in the hole and it doesn't vibrate, you're good. I may have pulled this side out just a little further than I should have, but that's fine because I'll just go rear end somebody else. Now I got to do some hammering. So I got to get rid of some of these little dimples. The license plate goes there, so I tried to hide a lot of them under the license plate. But these dimples, I'll be able to smash most of those down. And the bumper's junk anyway, so it was junk anyway, you'd had to replace it. But now, the uh, the mounting frame where this mounts to on the frame and stuff like that is all sh should be straight now. So if I went to the wrecking yard and if I found a bumper, it would just line up and look good. Yeah, I pulled it just a little bit far, but I'm going to sledgehammer it back now. Um, now this scenario, if you pulled out that and you pulled out your radiator core support, but your hood was still bowed, this hook comes in really handy, and you can just put a little bit of tension on it. When you're trying to straighten out a hood, this hood's not bent, but if you were to put a little bit of tension on it, and while you do that, put like a two by four, or a couple blocks of wood right here, and then push right on your crease. Your crease is gonna be all the way across right here. Just push down on it. Just push down on it, you'll be able to flatten that thing out almost perfectly and just keep hammering on it because you're going to be all crinkled up and creased up here. You're going to have that big crease all the way across, but you should be able to flatten it out. Keep going. Don't pull too hard on this hook because stuff so sh it'll actually twist it. It'll twist it out, but you can hammer it back and it won't line up, but just keep pulling it until you get about right until it lines up with your hood latch closing. So now I'm going to tackle these and start hammering some of those little dimples in with the sledgehammer and smaller ball peen. Now don't be afraid if you pull out some areas too far because you can always push it back in and sometimes you need to pull out some areas far enough to restretch the metal and then push it back in in certain areas. That all it took, a couple whacks of sledgehammer, and that body line's near perfect. And now I can come in with a small ball peen and try to finesse some of these smaller dents out. Really not that crucial. See how I did on the other side. That could take another whack or so to push that back just another uh, inch or so. So just push this corner back just a little bit. Still got a little bit of a crease right in the middle, still just a little bit flat. But now, same with your radiator core support, you get it back to the major form, and if you're okay with this, you're good to go. But if not, you can actually just, now the, uh, the mounts for the bumper and stuff that might have got squeezed in when this was pushed back, are now all straightened out, or 95% where they were, I can actually take off the bumper and hammer from the inside, hammer and dolly from inside and take most of these little dimples and stuff out and make it look even better if I was concerned about it. Same with the radiator core support. Once you pulled it back and now everything's in line, if you're replacing your radiator anyway, you might as well, just, it's just a couple bolts. You can take that core support out, put it on the cement, put it on the ground, hammer it out beautiful if you're just trying to get something perfect. I mean, if you really want to, you can actually take your hood off if you're dealing with those creases, lay it upside down on your grass and kind of jump around on it. I'm serious, jump around on it and you can straighten it out. These techniques I've saved at least, um, that I can recall six, seven carves that were salvaged. I mean, they were the insurance, they were just straight write-offs. There was no way in heck an insurance company was gonna do any work on them. And they went on to live 
the rest of their life or at least until uh, the kids wrecked them for one last final time. Just to make it a little bit nicer, I pulled off the front bumper. Um, all my brackets and stuff look good. I can see where they were bent, but pulling it out, straighten them out. And I just tweaked the bumper a little bit, put it down in cement, hammered out some of the little dents just a little bit, smoothed it out. So now it can go back on and the truck is done and ready to go back to the neighbor. Pretty common, like this bottom lower corner of the grill is not supported because the little plastic brackets broke. But all they kind of do is stabilize it so I could just put a zip tie. I mean, it's just in a plastic anyway. I could just put a zip tie down and around, drill a little hole through the original plastic or something like that, just to keep it from kind of flopping, but it's held everywhere else, so it's not bad. We'll see. There we go. She looks pretty dang good. Unless you're really looking for it, unless it's your vehicle, you really won't notice that it's damaged. A little bit of time, a little bit of patience, maybe a hundred dollars for a radiator and you can have a running working vehicle that might not be super pretty but it's amazing transportation thanks for watching guys this isn't a how to paint your car i'm not a professional auto body guy i just do this for fun but i help a ton of people out and i help family siblings and neighbors out thanks for watching guys see you soon bye